All right. So, how did Postman Pat go from this to this? So, if you haven't watched Postman Pat in a while, you might be a bit lost. Don't worry, I'm here to fill in the gaps for you. And since I will cover Pat's journey from the beginning till now, there will be massive spoilers ahead, so you have been warned. Alright, without further ado, let's jump into it. So, we start off in the first season, where Pat is really just a low tier character with a cell level of, I believe it's around less than 20. Uh, this is pretty much lower than a recruit mailman, uh, just for comparisons. Uh, Pat starts to build a reputation in Greendale by helping and delivering letters and parcels. Although he's improving as a mailman, he's becoming much stronger. Um, so yeah, this series has uh, like a really slow start, but I believe that it's necessary to really get to know the characters and, and all. Uh, so the intro arc ends after the 10th episode where Pat gets an invite to the MA Academia and this is where the series really takes off. Um, so yeah, Pat's invite comes directly from well, Mrs. Goggins' uh, recommendations, since she was a close friend to Pat's father, uh, who was the previous mailman in Greendale. Uh, so Mr. Donald Clifton, uh, aka Pat's father, uh, is a mysterious character throughout the series, and well, what's the cause behind the Pentecost the Holocaust? Uh, when Pat was just a newborn, so that's a pretty big deal. He um, has thus far in the series the highest recorded Zen level and can really only be challenged by Sam Waldrum himself. Uh, and it's believed that uh, Patrick Clifton, aka Pat, uh, was chosen to the MA Academia for being the offspring of the most powerful being who ever walked the planet. But yeah, that is not confirmed, but it makes sense. So in season two, uh, Pat sits in the school bench and learns new trick like the classic door knock followed by the ring on the door, uh, which is also mentioned in the intro songs. I'm, I'm sure you you've heard of that one. There'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> and he's a very quick learner, and the kids at school really enjoys being around him. He draws, however, not only friends but foes to him. And becomes the victim of a bunch of like pranks and also violence uh, and this is also something that triggers his inner calling the musquada and this is where his zen level starts to really power through i guess uh, the musquada is an uh, ability unique to the clifton clan that really only passes through so i believe it's the first born son in the family something like that i, I don't know exactly but it's it's super rare and only three cases are uh, recorded in, in the series he gets awakened by a life-threatening ex experience and gets stronger for each bad interaction i guess uh, so yeah in season three pat is still very far from being one of the strongest in the series um, but people are at least starting to acknowledge him uh, his kindness as well as his big brain helps turn out or like helps turn tons of battles into Pat and his friends favor so he's really doing a good job um, and of course Pat is never the sole reason to why they succeed so well but he is a very major part in this and it's also very easy to miss how much he actually contributes in the fights uh, I have a, have a pretty good example in the episode 9 in the third season uh, which is Postman Pat goes football crazy I'm sure you've all seen it uh, oh, which is also like a huge foreshadow in the title to the Hubbard incident later in the season <laughs> that's actually pretty funny because you don't think about it when it, it pops up the first time uh, so yeah but Pat's team is uh, down with three goals to nil and then he suddenly comes up with a plan out of nowhere uh, and tells uh, Katie Pottage to do a certain trick uh, that would score them lots of goals. And surprise, surprise, they win with 7 3. So it proves to be quite the trick. Uh, 
Pat always keeps the team morale up and never gets beaten down. I think this is a huge character trait and a factor to his strength. So the MA uh, Academia seasons are, like, yeah, they are pretty similar to each other and all in all they can be seen as pretty long training arc. Um, a very good one though, uh, needs to be said. It's not just a training arc, it's a, like a really good training arc. And it's not until like season 7 uh, where shit really starts to get real. Uh, so yeah, the season starts off with Green Day being attacked by Nikhil Bane's army. You know, the teen, the 10 month old uh, baby boy prodigy of Ijad and Nisha Bane's. And yeah, he's the main villain for the whole season. He gets beaten in the 24th episode, however, um, Postman Pat and uh, the Great Greendale website, um, with the help of Mrs. Goggins and Sam Waldron. Uh, so yeah, this puts Pat on the list of one of the most powerful youngsters in the country, and this also gets him recruited to uh, the male Avanza unit, uh, which of course makes Sam Waldron pretty pretty angry because he feels betrayed by the government because he didn't get an invite and yeah he starts his own organization called Maru. Uh, the male Avanza unit and Maru are since that day sworn enemies and well, they fight against each other to obtain the power of the country I guess. Uh, and yeah Pat is no match for Sam Waldron at this point and it's and yeah, Pat is only like tagging along as a sidekick on missions, uh, learning uh, from the more veteran people. Uh, but it's at the male Avanza unit where he meets his dad's best friend uh, and the second one in command after him, uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown teaches Pat to reach a new dimension from within with his Moscada ability. Uh, and Pat later saves the whole male Avanza unit's HQ from a surprise attack from no other than Moro and Sam Waldron. And in this attack, unfortunately, Mr. Brown dies. That's a very sad episode. Uh, if, you, if you don't like crying, then, then you shouldn't watch it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this of course drives Pat pretty insane and he becomes a monster destroying everything in his path. And you can really see what the Clifton clan is capable of doing. Uh, yeah, he managed to save the HQ, but still a lot of people died, and this really starts the era of Dark dark Path, um, where he just goes around slaughtering people, uh, doesn't care, doesn't feel any emotions towards anyone. Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty dark. Ter territory right there. Uh, Pat gets rewarded for his cavalrous actions and well, he receives a, a medal as well as becoming the squad leader of the 1st Battalion uh, which is a pretty huge deal. Uh, but yeah, he turns it down uh, because he wants revenge and so he leaves May Lamanza unit because they wouldn't allow him to do whatever he wants. And uh, yeah, while on this journey, he learns about his father's dark past uh, through his Moscata ability that Mr. Brown teached him. And uh, he knows that the path that he chose to go uh, will only lead to even more destruction and more death. Um, so yeah, he has a inner conflict, I guess. Uh, so after that and some truth seeking, he'll come back to Green Day. Uh, it's been three years now, and nothing is the same, and everything is pretty much destroyed. Um, Pat can now, however, control his feelings, and he managed to save Green Day by killing the evil Uncle Thompson, uh, also a uh, part of Maru. Um, and yeah, this is where we are today. So, a lot of stuff ha has happened. Uh, and Pat is now believed to have surpassed Miss Hubbard's 800 cent. Uh, but it's not yet confirmed. And 
yeah, I guess all the fans are just waiting for the big, the big showdown between Sam Waldron and and Pat right now. Something I, I, I still have a hard time seeing Pat being a match for for Sam Waldron, but I mean he he has some big brain powers and he can definitely uh, throw some curveballs at at Waldron. So I'm I'm not sure it's it's gonna be so exciting uh, these next couple of of weeks and I yeah I'm really looking forward to it so yeah that's all for me today and uh, if you like these kinds of videos then I don't know be sure to like and subscribe and all that uh, yeah and this has been Selkus uh, see ya.